Yeah, so mom had to beg Art Drugenbrod to, to let me in. And Art allowed me to be in, even though he knew that I had never played a brass instrument before. And the, uh, the music, you know, the music um, store would come out to the schools and test you on all of the instruments and all of that. And they told me that I would never play a brass instrument. And they gave me a saxophone. <laughs> so I played the saxophone in band at, in the middle school. And then um, I learned the trumpet from uh, Jack Jack Meadey's Tom, our original director's Tom Jack Meadey's brother who was a big band band leader in Canton at the time. I remember being asked to play one note on a trumpet and him taking it away from me and telling me I was a drummer. Well, 72 is when we uh, officially entered. I don't think we did anything except parades in 73, right, Kev? I, right. In 70, 72 and 73, it was the new group with the new leadership um, that uh, was Tom Jack Meadies and, and Art Drukenbrod, those guys, uh, they were building something different than what the Police Boys Club had years and years prior. Because really that, that was, the, their intent way beyond that was just really to keep the kids out of trouble and keep them off the streets, or at least keep them on the streets organized. 70, 72 and 73, we did real parades in real structured ways. And we were trying to be better and we were trying to grow and we were trying to gather people from around the areas. That's what we were about during those years. We didn't have uniforms, so we were in t-shirts and borrowed band pants. And sometimes we wore our blue coach jackets in parades, stuff like that. I think I was just around probably being a pest um, and they just said, we might as well just give her a fly. Either that or my parents wanted like less of me. It's easy to have us all at one spot. Because there were six of us, right? So oh, well, I would say dad was more active yeah, than I mom, say. just because mom was corralling all of us kids. And she, she didn't have a whole lot of time to do that. Dad was the first Boost Club president. He organized paper drives. Yes, we went around and, and collected newspapers from our neighbors and things like that. We sold candles. We did um, rockathons and other stupid fundraisers. Oh, I remember things. the rockathon. That was fun. We Oh, yeah, great. We did all kinds of stuff like that. Trying to And he also, he also designed the original t-shirt, our original yeah, the logos. jackets. Uh, the logo. the buttons. Button. We all made we buttons would, all the time. We would all sit around making buttons. Yeah, that's the actual original uh, logo that he did that went on the back of the yeah. jackets. I mean, you guys are selling his designs now. Yeah, his. his yeah, those yeah, yeah, we want our royalties, buddy. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> what I remember mom doing the most. Just because, you know, Is she I gonna could see this? help. <laughs> she would make giant Texas sheet cakes. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Giant sheets. Yeah. 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 She would always giant. make, so she, she would make food. I think she helped so. I think she did too. Sewing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I for sure, flags. For sure, yeah. she sewed flags. It was an exciting time. We were, um, you know, that was the big hype was we were going to actually put on a field show and we got some um, new blood from Akron and we had an Akron bus coming down and Ralph would go up. We would practice Tuesdays and Thursday nights, I remember, and weekends. And Ralph would drive up to Akron and pick up people and bring them down. And that's where Renee came from and many other people came from the Akron bus. It really in injected a lot of um, talent and um, a decent amount of people that, that really helped us take that next step. And so it was exciting, you know, even though the, <laughs> when I look back and see the pictures of what we did, it was just kind of crazy. We had, had a straight line. We did a couple untickable turns as Tom Jack Meadies would, would call them. Um, and then we would set up in a concert formation, play our concert songs, and then go off the other side and we'd be done. And the best thing about it was we were in those brand new 
uh, uniforms. I mean, those were incredible top of the line uniforms that Drew and Broad had made for us. And they were really, really beautiful. And that double ostrich plume was really unique in the drum corps. Nobody had seen anything like that. Most of our experience and most of our memories, I'm sure, are tied to, are tied to breakdowns. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because we had a lot of I don't think that ever changes. <laughs> yeah. Whatever decade. Yeah. I so do remember our... uh, first realizing that people were old enough to drink beer when we were in, <laughs> when we oh, were yeah. in Colorado and they were all trying to get Coors beer. Yeah, at that time, Jay, you weren't allowed to bring it across state lines. Oh, um, that's right. So we we packed it inside drum cape, inside the drums, <laughs> unscrewed the heads and put it inside the drums and brought it across the state line going back to Ohio. Now, that wasn't me. I'd like to be very clear that that was a drum issue. That was not that was a, a that was a drum line issue. Yeah. I don't think that's changed uh, in the life of the court, probably. <laughs> We did a uh, uh, Copper Mountain Ski Resort. Mountain. Yep. We all rode up the little uh, <laughs> the ski lift when there was yeah no the, the ski lifts yeah <laughs> oh we also went to Red Rock Amphitheater yes we yeah did. we went to, we went right, to Red we went Rock to, Amphitheater which is really big now you know there was a lot of us a lot of us that stuck around from 74, 75, 76, 77. we stuck around for a long time.
but you know it was one of those things where like i said before they all were together and then it was me so this was you know the one and only opportunity for us to actually all be together you know was something that was so important to all of our you know childhoods it wasn't just hard doing stuff again 50 years after you did it this was stuff we never even did 50 years ago this is you know we were expected to be at a level of competition that we were never at anyway right. so then to bring to bring yeah. your best and not <laughs> feel like you're bringing everybody down we all felt like we had to stay on point it was super amazing it was exhilarating and something i'm so glad that i did but man it was a lot of pressure yeah at least for those of us at, at this age group like individually i know i thought like okay this was my best run and stuff like that but i never thought that we were going to get out there and that was going to happen and we were going to feel the way we felt about it or the crowd was going to feel it gives me chills now to think about it the how I'm the crowd right felt about it you know was uh was a bit overwhelming you know if there was anything that i would tell people it's to be in the moment enjoy what you're doing while you're doing it don't look for somebody else's experiences on Facebook or don't check your phone to see what's the latest TikTok challenge or any of that kind of crap. Focus on what you're doing. Be with the people that you're with. There, You all have similar experiences. You all have similar passions and goals. Enjoy your time with the people that you're with. Just enjoy it because, you know, looking back, those are some of the greatest times of our lives, and, and it's yeah. fun to look back at.